Welcome everyone to another episode of the Shaman's Way podcast. As always, this episode comes from the teachings of our amazing friend and shaman in residence, Cricket. We hope you're enjoying these podcasts as much as we enjoy making them, and I'd like to take just a moment to ask you if you would please leave us a rating and a comment in iTunes or whichever podcast player you're listening to us from. Giving us a rating and sharing this podcast with others is the biggest way you can tell us that you like our show. Now, without further ado, on with the episode. Hello everyone and thank you for lending me your ear and your mind and your time to listen to some of the words that I have. This is a lovely broadcast and podcast for the links. I was requested to do a podcast on the links and I thought, well, that's an absolutely grand idea. So I would like to share some of my thoughts and some of my ideas on the links with you. I grew up in a fairly secluded and heavily wooded area. One of the best ways for me to explore this beautiful wilderness farmland with creeks uh, was on horseback. And I admit that I would not have seen either of the beautiful cats I did, I did if my horse had not reacted first. My encounter with the lynx was, abs- was, it still fills me when I think about it, when I call to mind the vision of the lynx peering out of the trees that were lining the road I was riding my horse on and its face and its big front paws were still as can be and top of the well the hedge of snow that had been pushed up by the plow and if my horse had not uh, moved to the side I never would have seen it and I watched as it very slowly moved toward the road and was making its way across from west to east and I respected enough to be silent and I know enough when I ride that although I'm scented and seen I have better encounters or had better encounters with animals on horseback than I ever have on foot. It still to this day fills me with a feeling of tranquility and absolute awe and the fact that I was able to gaze at it much to my horse's displeasure for the length of time that it did and to watch across the road in front of me and silently disappear into the bushes was just absolutely beautiful. I also have an encounter with a bobcat that is similar, but it occurred in the summer. I was riding my horse along a cut trail and, you know, minding my own thoughts or lost in thought or, you know, whatever you're doing sometimes to pass the time. And suddenly my horse jumped to the side and snorted. Uh, The bobcat spotted my horse but really didn't seem to know it was me. I knew it was a bobcat and not a lynx, primarily because of its coloring. It's brown and its face really is more akin to the domestic cat. And the coloring is vastly different. The lynx has a light gray face with slanted eyes. The bobcat has tabby markings, darker brown and large feline eyes and there are you know they there are other differences in size and in and in you know general appearance alone but that's basically from that I dedicated the July newsletter to more information about different species and the lynx I think is just an absolutely amazing being it can leap seven meters that's 23 feet it at once 
Now, if you look at pictures of the lynx, whether it's the Canadian, the Eurasian, or the Iberian lynx, you'll see that the hind end is longer than the front end, and that genetically enhances its ability to leap such amazing heights. And their stealth, my goodness, and they can vanish in an instant. If I was a hunter, I believe the lynx would absolutely inspire me. The lynx has a shorter tail to the bobcat, which has a longer black and white tail. They both have beautiful long tufts of black hair on the tips of their ears. The cheek ruffs of the lynx look like a double pointed beard and they it the lynx just has this regalness about it. The mane on the bobcat is shorter, it's darker in color where the lynx comes down and definitely does appear to have two very separate layers to it. The lynx that I saw, I noticed that it had very large padded snowshoe paws and I thought, well my goodness, that's an asset for Alberta snows and for mountains. I really think that if one lived near you, it may be years between sightings, if ever. Its presence may go unnoticed for years. In trying to find out further information, as you likely know, I look for stories about what I am trying to learn more about. And I found a University of Alberta website that I'll include on Shaman's Way about myths. And there are three myths alone that are representative of the links or have the links in them, which I think is really quite amazing and the author of the web page points out that we must have a long-standing relationship with lynx. Now where does the word lynx come from and why lynx? There, if you would like to look up the longer version of the Latin words and the translation and so on and so forth, I absolutely encourage you to do so. It however it refers to the luminescence of its eyes its irises have the unique ability to expand wider with reflectors that um, I, all irises expand and all eyes have reflectors but the lynx has a deeper layer of them and the expanding irises and reflectors and this enables them to hunt effectively at night and this is when they are most active the lynx is used to symbolize the sight or vision and we're credited with the particular ability sometimes this is kind of funny but they were they had such mystique that they were given the ability to see through material things um, translucence eagles have another type of see, uh, sight they can see for miles but have poor close-up vision the Lynx is the most clear-sighted of all the quadrupeds, according to a compendium of natural history. Well, but we know that the eye is an organ of vision that detects light. But the, the German luch for lynx resembles the word look. And in Old Norse, gaupa, lynx, resembles the word gape or to stare wonderingly. It looks as though our ancestors also referred to that gaze, that expanding iris, that reflecting eye. When I think about the acuity of the lynx eyes or the intensity of their eyes, they arose from two paired and complementary virtues, sharpness of vision and depth of insight. Think about that. The outside and the inside, the eye and the mind. The lynx with its superior vision from a shamanic perspective not only sees what lies outside but also notes what arises from inside. Across the centuries and woven throughout the lore, as I mentioned earlier with the store, star myths, 
There are many people that have recognized the lynx as a silent witness to the foils and the follies of humankind. It seems to be ascribed a wise and silent sage that seems to possess a knowledge of the mysteries of both heaven and earth. But interestingly, I think that the lynx is a gatekeeper to the foundation of this amazing wheel of wisdom. He is one of the spirit kin that possess the knowledge of the secrets. And there are other spirit kin who are assigned to protect that knowledge and secrets. I like to ponder that. I like to think about that. The tufts of fur that adorn the ears. Hmm. They're receivers. They remind me of the elk and the elk's large horns. And the horns are the receivers of the lightning medicine and the sky medicine and the sky electricity. So they are receivers of that. And the tufts of fur on the links are the receivers for the secret knowledge and the wisdom transmitted from the ancestors. And maybe you are fortunate enough to have Lynx as your main sidekick, your absolute spirit, the however you want to refer. And if you do, you may have a keen sense of it or an interest in the deeper mysteries of life. And if you did have Lynx, Likely you had lynx or some a primary feline very early on. And the childhood, that's if we were to say, talk about the lynx, you know, it, it would be one of heightened emotional or psychic awareness. And the lynx soul may have felt distance or removed from those around them. Sometimes the gift for sudden flashes of insight is noticed at an early age. Maybe you had those. and Maybe yours were encouraged. Maybe you had open-minded or, you know, alternatively thinking inclined individuals raising you. Or perhaps you lived in a home where you felt it was, you were unable to share your flashes of insight and your emotion or your psychic awareness was squashed. If this took place in our younger years, the adult self may not have conscious recollection, re recalling of pushing this down their psychic, their perceptive insights. Still as adults, however, it hasn't been resolved. And there exists a reluctance to share their insights with others for fear of rejection or ridicule. And this may be you. And I know that this is also an aspect of being intuitive too, and you don't necessarily have to have the links. But there is also that fear of rejection. The person beside with whom the links pads simply knows the deeper mysteries and the secrets of life. The lynx brings with this an inner knowledge that guides and directs decisions and choices in the physical path, you know, the red road. They're not necessarily here to divulge that knowledge on a broad basis unless another spirit can walking, flying, or swimming says so. For example, the lynx provides the knowledge of universal secrets. And what if you're, you know, you have a great relationship with crow? Well, the crow might be a mission spirit can to carry the message of such secrets to others. So we look at the different uh, power animals or the spirit kin that we have and it really is important to take the entirety of 
all of your spirit kin into examining, into consideration when you're thinking about your lessons or your medicine and what is the medicine, what is the lesson unique to each spirit kin. Sometimes we are in cross, not cross purposes, but sometimes we have that push-pull because we have different aspects of self. The lynx that I saw certainly was well equipped by Mother Earth to survive in the climate and the seasons that demand only the fittest survive. The lynx had the most beautiful thick coat and it would protect it against the ice and snow of bitter winters. Also with very large, large paws. I mean, that would be like snowshoes that keep the lynx adrift on, to, on top of snow so that she or he or it may easily chase the fleet and sure-footed snowshoe hair because that is one of the lynx's loves and delights and primary source of food. They blend, they move silently and swiftly and across lots of different terrain, terrain. This is the primary factors in the fact that they can approach prey nearly unseen and unheard. Again, I think the lynx is the ghost cat. I know the cougar is often considered the ghost cat, but for me, the lynx is more relatable for my experience with ghosts. The elusive creatures have been difficult to catch sight of because they have an uncanny ability to slip unnoticed before you even realize you were, they were present. I'm certain they are highly cautious and curious if I was a lynx, I would stay hidden in the bushes or in the shadows or any form of concealment that would be available to me and observe and watch. To move so silently and pass unseen, that was noted by our ancestors and our ancestors' ancestors. And they understood the power of the lynx to be one of slipping effortlessly between the planes and dimensions. seer of the unseen. Mm. What a lovely paradox that is. Creatures of solitude, reservation. In order to survive as long as they have, they would have to have vigilance. If they love the solitude, then we can maybe assume they might be hermit-like and understanding spiritual mystery. Some have equated the Sphinx with the Lynx. Think about the invisibility I talked about. And with many animals that are elusive, we have this relationship, this battle, this push, this pull between knowledge and superstition, play, perception and protection on all levels, that peripheral vision, that perception and awareness. Manipulation of time and space in the spirit worlds, the underworld, the upper world. They love to live in mature forests and mountainous regions. But the Iberian lynx is found in deserts and heath and scrubland. They're noted for their haughty or imperial gaze, and we chatted about that with the, where the word lynx came from and the difference in their eyes. So that would give them a great advantage at dawn and dusk, but also they're very nocturnal. Now, I do not appreciate dusk. Dawn, I'm good with dusk. It, I find it difficult to navigate in dusk. 
they're quite dependent on the rabbit and the hares. They are thought to be, their numbers are thought to be directly proportionate to the hair numbers, such as we also know that there are other animals that rise in numbers based on the rise and the fall of the cycles of nature. Because they are mostly silent, they use body language and scent to communicate. However, they do yowl and hiss in the mating season. And as you know, they are hunted for their pelts. And kittens are, you know, they are preyed upon by coyotes, owls, and foxes. However, the Canadian lynx does go after the foxes and the coyotes, although the coyotes are probably the primary uh, predator for, for them. If the lynx is in and around, it's often, I think, from the shamanic perspective, I wonder what, what are the lessons that it is trying to teach me. The lynx, perhaps it talks about caution or vigilance. If you have the lynx come through as a short-term spirit kin or a helper, or you pull it in your medicine cards, I ask you, do you pay more attention to your surroundings, even when you know you aren't in any danger? Reservation when going about our life teaches us to think before we act. So if you're an impulsive person, can you reflect on the lessons of the links? You can journey to the lynx. Whether or not it'll show up or talk to you, I don't know. But there's no harm in trying. Because it has been assigned the task of the keeper of the secret knowledge and the wisdom knowledge, it can help to bring clarity and understanding of spiritual mysteries. And this clarity, in turn, enables us to learn more hidden secrets and understand how those mysteries apply to our lives and to those around us. It's also the opportunity as the lynx sits back, it's very much a skeptic. So again, we're going to talk a little bit about that knowledge versus superstition. So the energy of the lynx might be, might Put a bit of a damper on superstitious folks and they may help us to overcome our blockages to learning deeper things or deep-seated grounded in superstition. I don't know. Maybe you're not a superstitious person. Because of its ears that are receivers and I, the incredible physical, genetically enhanced ears, their perception on all levels and growth implies that they are beings that are well suited to both worlds. They perceive in all areas and when we perceive in all areas we grow immeasurably. Perception leads to protection. I talk about that in one of the upcoming newsletters. I talk about the awareness and perception and how we stand at equinox in the balance and allowing ourselves to see greater aspects of self. The lynx is a very solitary creature. And at times I think that we have assigned that solitary, that hermit, as one who understands secret tips, secrets as well as to be secretive. But I don't really find this to be deceptive or deliberately malicious. I find the lynx is an energy that simply stands apart. Lynx, people with lynx as their spirit kin or really in their lives often find that they connect best with others and themselves when they deliberately disconnect from over-socializing or stretching themselves too thin.
if we have this inherent ability to see or within the souls because of our vision, the heightened awareness, the ability to observe, for a creature to be mythically unseen, so having the ability to unsee or not, not be seen, the vision or the perception then implies spiritually that it a person with the lynx energy, or if you journey to the lynx, would have the inherent ability to uncover all that is hidden from the eyes of a less observant individual, i.e. perhaps yourself. Perhaps it would be better to have a stranger journey to lynx on your behalf if you cannot find the relationship or do with lynx. I don't know. That's a thought. That is not necessarily an immediate or intuitive sensing but a gradual process of uncovering hidden corners and shadows and this is through silent observation much as the lynx in the wild again would quietly observe prey and trespassers in their territories and during the early you know during the times of the year when the females are in heat potential mate I think the lynx has the ability to see right through the outer appearances of others. The masks. I talk a lot about the masks. I feel the lynx is, lynx is that which is the very heart of all that is hidden beneath. I think that the lynx has the ability to recognize fears, secrets, agendas, different feelings, Sometimes those things can be invisible. And there are perhaps your eyes when you gaze into people make some people feel unconscious or nervous because they feel you can see right through them. Perhaps you have lynx or another cat or spirit kin that has amazing vision. And perhaps what is relating with the lynx may also be relating with you. The Black Panther possesses the ability to see in the hearts and the minds of the others. Its sole medicine is to point these areas out. It is not the medicine of the lynx to do so. The lynx merely uncovers the hidden and stores the knowledge away. Perhaps you might, it might share its knowing to the person who it glimpsed those hidden feelings and thoughts of. Yet they remain silent on these things until such a time that they are approached for assistance. So sitting in the, in the, in the shadows, where there are other spirit kin who encourage you to go to others and say, I see this within you, and therefore I believe that I can help you such as the, you know, the black, the jaguars. But that's not the way of the lynx. They're cautious about how much is revealed or shared of their inner knowing. Again, they're the protectors of this inner knowledge. And they have spirits around them who help protect them and that knowledge. They're not particularly here to point out areas to others, nor does this knowledge necessitate that they must share it? I kind of think of them as, you know, maybe perhaps their intuition or their ability to see as a detective or that which uncovers hidden truths. So a good tracker. You know, Lynx would be a great tracker. Any kind of cat is a good tracker. And trackers do uncover hidden truths. But those hidden truths cannot be shared with anyone other than who that truth is associated with. Revealing unhidden truths is not that is shadow medicine. That's willful and egotistical. It is shadow medicine. The lynx spends primarily its entire life alone. The female 
has its kits, its babies. Usually the average litter is two to four kittens and they only stay for approximately nine months and they go away and then the mother goes into heat again or the female goes into heat again and it mates through and it's it's about a 60 to a 70 day gestation so they're they're very well you know they're cats it's cats that's the way it goes I can't imagine what those cats sound like in heat can you imagine what that would sound like your cat I don't know if you own a cat but I don't know if you've ever heard a cat in heat but it it grates on your very soul. The very essence of who you are cries out, Why? Why have you forsaken me, Sanity? Return to such thing which makes such noise. Please, Sanity, visit upon that animal which screeches deeply into the night. Or something like that, anyway. <laughs> hmm. So, if you are you know, a lynx person, perhaps you like to spend much of your time alone. And perhaps you find yourself alone at intermittent times or intermittent intervals. What if that aloneness comes with separation from death of a loved one or the disintegration or parting of a relationship? Does your soul, does your link soul feel the need to separate from others even while sharing the same physical space? Distancing, disassociating from the area, disassociating from the space. A trait that is often misunderstood by loved ones as rejection, when in essence it, it just is the presence of that soul. It's not that the lynx don't desire companionship. However, they do enjoy, they tend to enjoy the earth walk in a solitary manner. Every creature has its own medicine, which is unique to itself, is gifted by the great mysteries. For the lynx, it is the medicine of invisibility or the ability to slip unseen and unnoticed between the worlds. This medicine serves to the lynx to observe in silence the foils and the fobbles, the falsehoods and the triumphs of the human spirit. The lynx then carries this to the elders that they may determine the course of humanity's spiritual progress. So what does that mean? That they observe. Do you think that means that they go and tattle on you to the elders? I don't know. And why is that part of the mystery of the lynx? Was that as an aspect or a callback to our relationship that the animals spoke to us still? Or is the lynx then also referred to in relationship to the shaman, those who takes the, the, the calling of the village to the elders, to the ancestors, so that the ancestors may help them in their quest to become whoever they choose to become. Lynx have good knowledge of self and good knowledge of how they wish to be in the world. The medicine of the lynx ultimately is a sounding board and silent, a non-judgmental witness to friends, to strangers, family, they find you comforting with your ability to listen without offering advice, to offer support free of judgment. Standing in the place of honor and standing outside the place of judgment is the proper place. I think the links and the elusiveness asks us to move to a higher calling and to serve a purpose of the elders. 
And there I'm going to end it for today. And I'm going to say thank you for listening. And thank you for being present as I meandered through my thoughts on the links. And if you have requests or thoughts or feedback, I would love to hear from you. Thank you, my constant listener. I'll talk to you again. Thank you again for joining us here on the Shaman's Way podcast. If you have any questions, would like to make a request for a future episode, or if you're looking for other shamanic resources, including free drumming tracks, please visit us at shamansway.net. Until the next episode, be well, everyone.